Hi everyone, and welcome back to the series From Ashes to a New Beginning, written by yours truly, Stacey Holt. Artwork was by Pastel Kitty Gore Art on Instagram, otherwise known as Maddie Kitty 1997 on DeviantArt. I'll leave her links below. I highly recommend you go check out her artwork. I'll also leave everyone that is collaborating within this chapter, which are Shane will be voicing Cat Noir and Adrian, Maddie will be voicing Kagami, Kenna will be voicing Plague, Ashton will be voicing Alia, Mary Mitch will be voicing Nino, and I'll be voicing Marinette, Ladybug, and the narrator. Now, Chapter 25 Caught. He unlocked his phone and clicked on his messages, revealing the entire message from Kagami. Adrian, are you awake? Adrian swallowed, glancing over at Marinette, who was sleeping soundly. The words that Lucas said to him repeated once again in his mind about something that Kagami was going through, and he felt guilty for not being there for her. Yeah, I'm awake. You said you wanted to talk about her past. Is now an okay time? I think we should talk in person about it. If right now is too late, I understand. No. Right now is fine. My mother has been lenient through the years. Great. I'll see you at the park near our old high school then. See you there. Adrian sighed, knowing that sneaking away from his princess wasn't the best move, but she would understand, right? He would never risk his relationship with her. He loved her too much. He simply wanted to make sure everything was alright with Kagami. Luca made it obvious that she was going through a lot at one point, and he wasn't there for her. He put their breakup before their friendship, and that wasn't right. Adrian slid out of bed and quietly walked over to the window, looking out at the night sky. He looked over at Marinette one last time before transforming and disappearing into the streets of Paris. Catamore ran across the rooftops and made his way to the park where he told Kagami to meet him and found himself there first, which wasn't surprising. Well, for one, he lived closer, and two, he also had superpowers to help him run across rooftops. He found an alley to de-transform and went and sat down on a park bench. He patiently waited for her, and after about 10 minutes, he saw her walking to him. She was still in her work uniform from that day, which caught him off guard. Hey, Kagami. Why are you still dressed in your uniform? Adrian asked. I've been really busy today. I haven't had time to change. She said. Oh, well... Um, would you like to sit? He said, offering her to sit beside him. She happily took the seat beside him and they sat beside one another in silence for a few seconds. So, Adrian... Kagami began. Y yes You said you wanted to talk about her past? She said, turning to look at him. Yes, I did say that, but Kagami... I wanted to say that- Adrian, I'm so happy that you brought it up. I felt so bad about the breakup, I regretted the entire thing, and I forgive you. Kagami smiled. Huh? Forgive me? He said, a little taken back. Yes, I forgive you. Kagami repeated. Kagami, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression, but I'm not here to get back together with you. He explained, trying to ignore the insult of the breakup being entirely his fault. What are you saying, Adrian? Why would you even want to speak to me again then? She asked, distancing herself. Kagami, I'm worried about you. I spoke to Luca. What did Luca tell you? Luca doesn't know anything. She interrupted him. Luca only told me that you tried to reach out to him at one point and he was going through something and he couldn't help you. He asked if I talked to you and it made me think about you. I wanted to make sure you were doing all right. Adrian explained. I'm fine, Adrian. Kagami said coldly. Kagami, I know you better than that. You can put up the cold front with others, but not to me. He sighed. Adrian, you knew me. You don't know me. She said again coldly. 
I understand that. I just wanted to let you know that I'm here for you, Kagami. Adrian explained. While I don't need you to be here for me or anyone else for that matter, I don't need your pity. I thought you were wanting to get back together. I guess I thought wrong. Kagami said, turning away hurt. I'm sorry I gave you that impression. It wasn't supposed to be like that. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm in a relationship, Kagami. Adrian began, seeing Kagami turn back to face him. Who? No. Before anything else was said, a rumble underneath their feet shook the ground, and they turned toward the distance seeing an akumatized victim. Go home where it's safe. We'll talk about this later. Adrian said, standing up. I think we're done talking. Goodbye, Adrian. Kagami said, standing up and walking away, making Adrian feel worse than he already did. Adrian wanted to stop Kagami from leaving and work things out with her, but knew the safety of Paris and her well-being was more important than a past friendship and ex-girlfriend. That's right, Kagami was his ex after all. Even though she was his ex, he still viewed her as his old friend, and knowing she was going through something and wouldn't tell anyone? No, that wasn't it. No one would listen to her. She was going through something and no one would listen to her. Hurt him. He clenched his fists and ran away from Kagami into a nearby alley despite his conflicted feelings. He transformed and lifted himself into the air, where he was met with Ladybug who was already waiting his arrival. Hey, LB. He smiled, pretending to act like his usual self. Though she didn't speak back, she ignored him. Ladybug zipped herself toward the akumatized victim, leaving Cat Noir alone on the rooftop. Hmm, maybe she didn't hear me? He said to himself, trying to brush it off. He followed close behind her and got beside her as they landed on a nearby rooftop where he assumed they would talk out a plan. So, what's the plan, LB? He smiled, awaiting her plan. Cat, can you just leave me alone? She said, turning to him. My lady, what happened? He said, seeing she was upset. I saw, it's nothing. Things in my civilian life are just complicated. I'm going through a lot right now, and I just need to think for a moment. She sighed. I'm sorry, LB. Let me know if you want me to help you come up with a plan, because I- I got it, Cat. Thanks. She said, interrupting him. LB. He said hurt. He could tell she was struggling with her thoughts on what to do, and decided to come up with his own plan. Why not get some help from other Miraculous users? It seems like we're struggling to get ideas. He said, smiling nervously. He could tell she didn't like his suggestion and was biting back her tongue by the face she gave him. He had never seen her act like this. Through the years they had been fighting together, something was really truly bothering her. What could be so important that it was causing her to be so distracted and misguided? Well, let's take it slow then. What do we know about the victim? Kat said, taking a deep breath. It's a young boy. High school or middle school maybe? It looks like he has the ability to- Watch out! Cat yelled, pushing Ladybug out of the way as a flying car was hurtled their way. Ugh, Cat! Ladybug groaned, pushing him off of her and jumping toward the Akuma victim. Cat sighed and ran toward the victim. After a few minutes of fighting, they finally defeated the victim. Though there were no more jokes or puns during the fight like he normally would do, she also didn't talk to Cat like she normally would do as well. He could feel the tension between them. And he couldn't understand why. He hadn't seen Ladybug since she said she would be staying after all. She seemed fine then. What could have happened? Ladybug threw her miraculous Ladybug into the air and fixed the city from the damages and pulled out her yo-yo, about to zip off when Cat walked over, holding his fist out with his usual fist bump. He waited patiently, awaiting their tradition, and she looked at him for a slight second debating. But instead, she zipped off. Kenoir's eyes widened, and he tried to chase after her, calling for her to find out why she was mad at him, though he lost her. He landed on the ground and he used his staff to call her Yo-Yo, but it went to voicemail. She either declined it, or she was detransformed. 
Under normal circumstances, he would have thought it was her detransformation, but now, he could have believed she declined it. He walked around the city, just thinking about what he could have done, feeling terrible until he saw the silhouette from a civilian's window cascade on the ground in front of him. He looked up and saw it was Ollie's house, and lifted himself up and figured he could always get her opinion, since she knew Ladybug just as well since she ran the Lady blog, but didn't expect to find Marinette there as well, crying. Why was Marinette there? Why was she crying? Did she get upset that he left during the middle of the night? But wouldn't she know there was an Akuma? She was too smart for that. Of course she knew there was an Akuma. What could she be doing? Kat leaned in closer to the window to try and listen, but all he could hear was Alia trying to comfort her. Girl, tell us what happened. Alia said, rubbing Marinette's back. Yeah, dude. It'll be alright. Um, do you want us to call your mom and dad? Nino asked. N no Please, don't do that. C can I stay here tonight? I don't really want to talk about it. Marina asked. Wait, she doesn't want to come home? Why? Why wouldn't she want to go back home? Did he do something? Katnoir left Alia's, resisting the urge to run to her side and ask her what was wrong. He hated seeing her cry. He wanted to be there for her. He knew she was smart. Maybe she had an ulterior motive? Like she did with her parents, maybe? Yeah, maybe he was thinking too much. Cat Noir D transformed and laid down in his bed, thinking about why she was crying. He lifted his phone. No texts. Did she not want to include him in whatever plan she was thinking? Was this even a plan? Was she really upset and he was just thinking this was a plan? Maybe he should text her. Hey, what's the matter? After the Akuma fight, I saw you at Alia's crying. Are you crying because you want to use the boyfriend plan like you did with your parents again? Princess? Why aren't you answering me? Hello? Did I do something wrong? Please, tell me. I'll listen. Come on, please, princess. To his surprise, Marinette was reading each text he was sending, but not responding. That made him feel worse. That meant she was actually hurt, and he was right about her being upset, and it wasn't part of the plan. Great. Good going, across. You're so smooth with the ladies lately. What are you gonna do now? Plag asked, seeing how worried Adrian looked. I'm not sure, Plag. I gave Kagami the wrong impression, Ladybug is upset with me, and I'm not sure why. Marinette is upset with me as well. Everything I do, I'm just making things worse. He sighed. Plag frowned, wondering if he should say something, but sighed instead. Just get some sleep and talk to Marinette in the morning. It'll be alright, kid. Plag said hopeful though he wasn't sure himself. Adrian sighed and turned on his side, laying his phone on the table. The following morning, Adrian woke up and still no text from Marinette, which was like a punch to the gut. He got up and took a shower and got dressed for the day, though they were both off work that day. So unless she wanted to see him, the chances of him seeing her were slim to none. As Adrian was about to head downstairs for some lunch, however, he finally heard a ding from his phone. He leaped over his bed and landed on his stomach, grabbing his phone, clicking on his notifications. It was a message from Marinette, though he didn't expect it to say this. I saw you leave last night. I found you with Kagami. Why were you with her in the middle of the night? Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, you can go check out some of my other videos like Thunderstorms, which is season one, Downpour, which is season two of Thunderstorms, The Butterfly That Brought Us Together, and so on. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!